Man, I am so jealous. I see videos of people in the South that are opening up their hives already. And it's like, oh, I want to do that so bad. And today, my forecast was it was going to be 50 degrees. It's not even 45 degrees. I don't think it's going to make it. The sun is still behind clouds. I'm out in my apiary today and none of my bees are flying. Maybe I saw one or two that's got a little more sun on them, but typically all the hives are not gonna fly out here until it gets, uh, you know, significantly above 50 degrees or so because it's windy and chilly. And I don't know, I'm just thinking, wow, <laughs> come on spring, where are you? Oh, it's coming. I was so surprised in yesterday's video that I made about how not to grow your apiary. How many of you love that video and it resonated with you because a lot of you, uh, you want to kind of keep your colony count to where you can manage it. And so I'm, I need to answer some of your comments that you left, some of the emails. So I want to drop back in and answer those. I was so pumped and excited yesterday when I saw all the feedback coming in from the um, YouTube video that I made about how sometimes you don't want to grow your apiary. A lot of you responded to that and I was shocked because I've spent so much time trying to help people grow their apiary and I was shocked at the number of comments of people saying, I don't want to grow my apiary. Thanks so much for that video. Have some questions though and I want to kind of talk about these questions that you asked. But listen to this one. Uh, thank you for this video. Exactly what I have been wondering. I do have a question. I understand the concept of removing the queen cell to prevent a swarm. I also realize that I will need to add more boxes uh, when they need to uh, have more room. Does it get to a point where the bees do not keep multiplying and will not need any more boxes? That is a very good question because we think that our bees just gonna keep growing forever. The easiest way to think about this, bee biology, which I love to share with you. And it's really all about understanding bees. So here's how we look at this expansion question. Are bees gonna to get to a place where you don't need to keep adding boxes? Well, even in the north where I am, we can get by with two brood boxes, and then you need to give them honey supers so they can keep storing honey to prevent them from swarming, right? So I don't know if you're ever gonna to get to a place where bees won't, won't need to keep growing. They want more boxes, uh, more honey supers to put more resources in. You probably won't get to a place where bees stop really multiplying until you get way into the fall. Once you have a hard freeze, there's no more nectar and the, the queen stops laying as much. So no, during the season, that's what bees are good at. <laughs> bees are really good at growing and growing and growing. And I had another great question that I wanna answer. I like this question a lot. I like people that kind of think outside the box. They think beyond the normal paradigm of things. So the concept that the uh, person is saying here is that instead of worrying about, you know, looking for swarm cells, taking your hive apart and all that, and trying to manage swarms all spring, that they're thinking about going in there, pinching or killing the queen and letting that colony raise a new queen, thinking that they won't swarm because a new queen is less likely to uh, create a swarm that year. Now, here's where bee biology comes in to help a lot if you understand bees. Here's what's gonna happen in my experience and observation of bees. If you go in there and yes, during or prior to or just uh, at the swarm season begins and kill that queen, they won't swarm that day and they won't swarm until they get another queen. So for example, you're gonna delay the swarm because they're queenless, that's right. But the risk you're taking is as soon as they raise a queen and she goes out on a mating flight and she comes back, starts laying eggs, as soon as she lays eggs, then the potential of swarm exists again. So you can't really bank on the fact that because she's a new queen, they're not gonna swarm. That is true, and the reason we say that a new queen, uh, that they don't swarm as much with a new queen, is because the way bee biology works, the queen is constantly evaluating the pheromones coming back to her as it goes through the hive. The more crowded that hive is, the less pheromone uh, potency is coming back to her and that can generate a swarm. So in this case, 
it's going to, they can swarm as soon as that new queen comes back and starts laying any eggs at all. They can turn those into swarm cells. You're not going to get off the hook <laughs> very long. You can buy you yourself some time. Would it increase or decrease honey production? It would, in your case, it's going to increase honey production because you're going to go 30 days without a queen while they raise one. During that 30 days, they're not having to raise brood like they normally would. That takes resources. That takes, you know, nectar, the bee bread and all that. They're not going to be doing that. They're going to have more space, sometimes in the brood nest area, unfortunately, but they're going to have more room to put more spring nectar in. So it will increase your honey production. In fact, a trick that I learned from the late Gene Killian that doesn't live too far from me when he was doing all his work on setting records of honey production, but uh, he would actually remove the queens during the nectar flows and uh, wouldn't have any queens. The hive would be queenless. He learned that they make more honey in a queenless state. And so I kind of follow him sometimes if I want to make a lot of of honey. So in this case, without the queen in there, gonna have more honey. Well guys, thanks so much for your questions. I love answering your questions. We're all getting excited for spring. Oh my gosh, nobody's more excited than I am, I don't think. But uh, right now we're just kind of staying uh, in winter mode, but spring is on its way. In fact, tomorrow, Puxatani Phil may or may not see his shadow if that really means anything, but it may give us some hope that uh, spring isn't that far away. Still far away from me though. So if you're starting beekeeping in the spring for the first time, I got a great video that you need to uh, sink your teeth into right here, how to start beekeeping. I'll see you guys over there.